Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Nauman and I'm in the graduate program in environmental science here at CSU and today I'd like to share with you a little project I'm working on uh, which combines archaeology and GIS technology, specifically uh, view shed analysis. So just to give you an idea of the region we're looking at here, so the top in the left, picture on the left here, the top right, this is the country of Peru. Um, this particular site, Quelab, is in northwestern Peru uh, along the Andes mountain range, eastern side of the Andes mountain range, and it's in a region uh, which is known as Chachapoyas, which can get a little confusing because the region is called Chachapoyas, and then there's a modern city inside of it called Chachapoyas, and also the culture um, that settled here for hundreds of years is called the Chachapoya by archaeologists. So just to distinguish between those, the region is Chachapoyas, the culture, the people, Chachapoya without the S. Uh, and then the site, Quelab, it's located very high above sea level, about 300 meters, as I mentioned, on the uh, eastern flank of the Andes Mountains. And it's interpreted since its rediscovery in the uh, late 19th century. It's been interpreted as a, a key settlement of this Chachapoya culture, which, as more and more research comes to light, uh, beginning to seem like they this blanket group of the Chachapoya might not have been so uniform after all and there's evidence of they were more socially politically fragmented than previously thought uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that uh, this site because it has these huge exterior walls uh, since the beginning since its rediscovery it's been interpreted as a fortress and when I say fortress here in the means in the classical sense you know a defensive structure uh, meant for keeping enemies out and also uh, gives visibility advantages onto the landscape because you want to be able to see your enemies approaching um, so part of this project is investigating whether the location of this site um, holds up to those standards of as a classically defined fortress. Uh, just another little note, it's becoming more and more, this site's becoming more and more popular. It's been being promoted uh, to tourists as the, and I'm sure you've heard of Machu Picchu, uh, further south. This has been called the Machu Picchu of the North. Um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, so on the left, this is the satellite imagery uh, of, is zoomed in on an arc map. Um, and on the right here, someone based, reproduced a hillshade, a very detailed map of all the circular buildings all the structures contained within. Um, <clears throat> so you see there's there's a lot, a lot of buildings inside of the actual walls. Uh, and then to give you a, a sense of the scale of this place, this is in, pretty enormous. These walls, 20 to 10 to 20 meters. Uh, so in America units, that uh, would be what? Uh, 30 to 60 feet. Uh, here's some more images. This is that main entrance on the eastern side and the stairway that goes up into the inside of the uh, complex. And here they, looks like they recreated one of the buildings. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then over here, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark. This person's wearing kind of dark clothing, but just to give you an idea the scale. There's a little person there. Yeah, this guy's a little easier to see. Wearing a white shirt, standing on the stairs. So yeah, you can see why someone might look at this 
structure from the outside and be like, well, yeah, that's like a castle. And here, just a few more images zoomed out. The top one looks like the northern end of the complex, and these this is from the side again, and here is the southern end with some little people standing there, so you can see it's pretty pretty large uh, complex that you have here. So for my research question, what I'm asking is the location, the placement of Quaylab. Does it make sense as a defensive structure? Is it strategically positioned in a way that would suggest that it was intended for defense based on the surrounding roads, the other settlements, which may have been rival settlements uh, in the mountains? Uh, and my hypothesis is that it is not. Um, it's not positioned in a way that would suggest it was conceived primarily for defense. And I'll be taking a look, exploring this hypothesis through the Viewshed uh, Spatial Analyst tool in ArcMap version 10.7. Uh, if you're not familiar, just a quick rundown of what a Viewshed analysis is. It's kind of self-explanatory, but... So it, it takes a three-dimensional surface and you specify an observer point or set of points that you're looking out from. Um, and it calculates based on the elevation of your observer and of the surrounding area if that area would be visible from your observer point. It does this for every cell in a raster image, which uh, a cell varies in size. In this case, mine are 30 by 30 meters. Um, so step one, as I mentioned, you need a digital elevation model or a digital surface model. Uh, they're the same thing, basically. Uh, my, and I got this data from Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency, and the reason that I use this source is, for one, it's from what I read, it's one of the uh, highest definition or highest resolution sources that's free, and also uh, of all the sources I explored, theirs was the most user friendly um, and easy to navigate, easy to find exactly what you're looking for, um, and I was able to locate the uh, the latitude and longitude that I needed, the squares that I needed uh, for the region that I was looking at very, pretty, fairly easily. So for the my source for the archaeological sites and the roads is the Peru Ministry of Culture has an online database, uh, which is called SIGDA for short, which translated just means GIS of archaeology uh, and they have a, a list of all the registered um, archaeological sites in Peru with spatial data attached to it and just a note here you'll see in my maps a mention of the uh, Capec Yan which is the Royal Road of the Inca and the Inca came into this region hundreds of years after the Chachapoya. And the mapping of these roads is based on the Inca routes. However, when the Inca moved into these regions and took over there, they basically used routes, trade routes, and paths that were had already been established a lot of the time by, uh, pre, by the cultures that were already there. So it's pretty safe to assume, to assume that uh, if you, the roads that they were using were there before the Inca. Uh, so here's my first viewshed map on the left. And Sorry, it looks like Cosmopolitan ice cream. Um, interesting color choice, that's just the default. So the red dot here is Quailap, and the surrounding sites 
are in orange um, and as you see the so these green where it's green is what's visible based on the viewshed analysis and everything else pink is not visible uh, and I to compare I, I did a little zoom in of my uh, digital surface model uh, and it makes sense the visibility uh, view shed makes sense because as you see Quaylap is n nestled here in between these two high mountain ridges so the the white is the highest elevation and this is this is in meters above sea level so the highest point is 4,000 over Quaylap was uh, around 3,000 so um, to the east and west basically you know it's, you just would see the sides of these mountains um, <clears throat> good pretty good visibility for tens of miles to the south but interestingly according to the view shed n there's not very good visibility of this road uh, that moves along the Capac Yan I mentioned which assuming that th there was already roads established there not very good visibility there and doesn't seem to indicate any visibility with the other settlements uh, to the north either so that being said uh, if it's for assuming that Quaylap was meant for defense uh, it doesn't offer very good vistas for uh, maintaining a visual up on roads that approach the the uh, site or neighboring sites uh, surrounding in, in the to the north so as my results uh, from that initial uh, viewshed analysis that uh, seems to support the hypothesis that it's poorly positioned as a defensive structure but just based on visibility there's other factors that can and should be taken into account uh, before making any broad sweeping generalizations but uh, just based on viewshed alone uh, it doesn't seem like it's very well positioned to be a defensive structure or a fortress in the classical uh, usage or sense of the word. So if it's not a fortress, then what is it? Um, there's a very interesting article which got published this year where this team did some some drone imagery um, and based on that they did some LIDAR, flyover LIDAR, and based on that along with uh, archaeological evidence, historical evidence. Um, there are some new hypotheses brewing that suggest that maybe there are uh, alternative interpretations uh, that could be taken on the site. Uh, for example, uh, in this article, the drone article I mentioned, they uh, suggest that from the from the evidence, it looks like it began as a, a small village. Uh, and expanded over time and that these these big walls weren't meant so much for defense maybe keeping people out but not so much for defense as as to emulate these cliff faces where the Chachapoya buried their ancestors and I'll give you an example of that this is not from Quaylap but this is the Chachapoya culture they have this very interesting practice of these cliffside sarcophagi on these very sheer cliff faces. Uh, how they got them up there, I don't know, but it's pretty unique and interesting part of their culture. Uh, next steps, so what I did with the viewshed here is not the only thing that can be done. There are more sophisticated methods and variations that I'd like to look into. That I've... And the question still remains, uh, what exactly is the relationship between Quaylap and some of these neighboring settlements. Uh, 
So that's all I got for you. These are my sources, and thank you for your time.